welcome to the Reconnection Club podcast, the show that helps parents heal troubled relationships with their adult sons and daughters. I'm your host, psychotherapist Tina Gilbertson. Each week, I'll offer you compassion, clarity, and personal development tips designed to help you reconnect, not only with your child, but with yourself. Now let's get started. Unconditional love for your child or children means that you love them no matter what. But loving them unconditionally doesn't mean you have to allow yourself to be treated poorly by them. You can be kind, generous, patient, and accepting of your adult child without getting walked all over or taken advantage of. And no matter how much it might seem otherwise, your child doesn't want to be able to walk all over you, treat you poorly without consequences, or take advantage of you. As the parent, you have always been a role model for your children. They want you to show them how to navigate relationships in a way that respects both self and other. That's why it's important to understand the difference between being a doormat and being the bigger person who doesn't engage in tit-for-tat or fly off the handle at the slightest provocation. I'm not going to suggest it's easy to always walk that line, only that with sufficient boundaries and limits, it's possible to make a small shift away from feeling like a doormat towards offering support from a place of appropriate personal power. Even though your love may be unconditional, boundaries and limits will inform how you respond to any given behavior from your child or children. I hope you'll agree after listening to the show today that it's possible to be supportive and kind without being a doormat who never stands up for herself. In short, you don't have to lose self-respect in order to be a supportive parent. I'll talk about specific examples of poor behavior and how to respond to those in a minute, but let me quickly first remind you that estrangement itself should not be considered poor behavior. Yes, it hurts terribly to be held at arm's length by your own child, and in that sense you may feel as though your child is behaving badly because they're hurting you. But when you understand that the hurt is not intentional, but is instead a kind of collateral damage in your child's quest to meet her own needs, you'll understand that not all behavior that hurts someone is inherently misbehavior. I've covered that general idea on a couple of different episodes. One was called Estrangement Hurts But Not On Purpose. That was number 27. Also episode 67, which was Why Can't My Child Show Some Empathy? If you're interested, you can find those episodes, 27 and 67, in your podcast player app or online at reconnectionclub.com slash 27 or 67. So let's now turn to some specific behaviors that parents tell me about quite often, and let's look at how you can express love and support in the face of these while holding good boundaries so that you don't feel like a doormat. The first example that parents often complain about is the adult child who only ever contacts them when she needs something. When parents hold this fairly common young adult behavior up to scrutiny, they feel somewhat critical of it. And the people they share it with also feel critical of the adult child who is, on the face of it, blatantly using her parents to meet her own needs. But in fact, if your child is contacting you for money or help, it's only because as a parent you were successful in establishing yourself as a resource for your child. Because of the way you treated her in the past, she's come to see you as someone who wants to help her, to be of service, and to be generous with your own resources, whatever they are. If you hadn't established yourself as a source of support, she wouldn't bother reaching out to you today. Imagine your child never coming to you for anything. As a parent, how does that make you feel? In any case, if your child keeps contacting you only to ask for things, consider the idea that 
She isn't doing anything wrong. She's just going back to the plentiful source of good stuff that provided for her so well in the past. You are that source. So it is up to you to establish limits and boundaries that you're comfortable with. You can be supportive by providing either emotional or material support, or both if you can swing it. But to keep from feeling like a doormat, you have to be willing to provide only what you can comfortably afford. You're not required to go bankrupt to support your child's partying, or her third graduate degree, or his refusal to work if he's able-bodied. If you do, it won't be your child's fault. It would be that you didn't establish boundaries and limits to protect your own assets. When it comes to emotional support, be as generous as you possibly can. Emotional support, including validation of any and all emotions, costs nothing, and it creates more connection between you than any amount of money ever could. So if you're one of the many parents who feel a bit resentful hearing from your child only when she needs something, decide what you're willing to give, how much and how often, especially when it comes to money. Once you've decided on your boundaries, you can convey these to your child the next time she gets in touch. Acknowledge that these are new boundaries and that you're setting them for your own well-being. Don't say or imply that she's done anything wrong in asking for help because she hasn't. Apologize if your new limits are hard for your child to work with and assure her that you want to support her to the extent that you're able, but that you have to stick to what works for you. You can listen and allow her to have whatever feelings she may have about it, and you can be patient and kind, but you don't have to change your boundaries to accommodate her needs. The second example of being supportive but not a doormat is if your adult child uses rude or foul language when he speaks to you. I did an entire episode on dealing with foul language. It's number 77 called Responding to Foul Language. I went into some sample dialogue in that episode, so if language or rudeness is an issue in your relationship with your child, definitely have a listen to episode 77. I'll just say here that you never have to put up with foul language from your child, or anyone else for that matter. You can set boundaries around how your child speaks to you, and yes, you may need to end the conversation from time to time if he's testing those boundaries, whether over text or in email or voice to voice. You are not anybody's doormat. And there's no good reason for anyone to be rude to you. So figure out your personal boundaries around language. And again, that's something I went into in episode 77. And hold those personal boundaries that you set for yourself. And by the way, even if you set good, healthy, normal boundaries, your child may get mad at you just because he's not used to it. It's okay if your child gets angry or frustrated with your new boundaries. Someone else's anger or impatience with a boundary is not a measure of whether that boundary is appropriate. Only you get to decide what you're comfortable with, and you're allowed to set any boundary that protects your well-being and your self-respect. Others may not like it, but that doesn't mean it's wrong. Apart from only calling when she needs something or using foul language with you, a third situation where you're trying to be supportive but you might start to feel like a doormat is when your estranged adult child refuses to respond to invitations. Of course, this leaves you hanging, wondering whether to set another place at the table or buy an extra gift or just give up on the possibility of her showing up at all. As it happens, I did an episode called Why Your Estranged Adult Child Doesn't RSVP, and that was number 65. So if you're wondering why an otherwise thoughtful person would refuse to respond to their parents' invitations, episode 65 has some ideas on that for you. But how do you keep from feeling like a doormat in this situation where you're left hanging and not able to make plans? When your child's behavior hurts your feelings or causes inconvenience, 
that should only be permitted to happen once. It should never be allowed to happen again. If you continue to issue invitations to an adult child who didn't respond the last time, or the time before that, it's not your child who's treating you poorly. You're putting yourself in a position to feel mistreated and ultimately resentful. You might wonder, though, how will she know she's welcome if we don't invite her? You can be warm and welcoming with your child when she reaches out to you about a birthday or a holiday or another upcoming event. You don't always have to proactively offer a welcome, especially if she hasn't responded to those offers in the past. She may not want invitations right now, so you're putting yourself and your heart and your plans at risk for no good reason. So don't keep issuing invitations if they're going unanswered. The more you protect yourself from being left hanging, the fuller your emotional bucket will be when your child reaches out to you, and you can respond with unconditional love and goodwill. And yes, a very warm welcome. If it puts your mind at ease, you can issue a blanket invitation to all future gatherings once, and let that stand. Let your child know she needs to speak up if she wants to participate from now on because you're respecting her desire for distance and won't be sending any more invites. That's all you need to do to make sure your child knows she's always welcome. I hope it's clear from the discussion today that whether you become a doormat in your efforts to be supportive is up to you. It's easy to be a doormat. Just let whatever happens happen and feel resentful about it. It's much harder to walk the path of loving and caring within the lines of healthy personal boundaries. But it is far more rewarding. Always remember, if you want to be supportive, that emotional support is free, so offer it copiously to both yourself and your child. Until next time, remember that you are a loving, lovable, and still growing human being. So please take good care of yourself. Bye for now. If you've enjoyed this episode of the Reconnection Club podcast, I invite you to check out ReconnectionClub.com. The Reconnection Club is for parents at any stage of estrangement from their adult, child, or children. So whether you've just realized there's trouble between you, you've been living with estrangement for years, or you're newly reconciled but still walking on eggshells, the Reconnection Club is your essential resource for information, support, and continued personal growth. With our courses and workshops, expert interviews, monthly Q&A calls, and a friendly, active community, the Reconnection Club is a wonderful place to be for anyone suffering the pain of estrangement from an adult, child, or children. So check it out at ReconnectionClub.com.